Hi everybody, today I thought I might bring you a little uh, chatty sew along video. I haven't done one of those for quite a while. Um, I'm making a gift for my aunt, I think I mentioned in a past uh, video. This one is a Wixton shift dress. I'm making the long version, which is the short sleeve long version with the tie front and the little slits on the sides. So well, I've got a linen, uh, mustard linen here. And I bought three meters of a 150 width, which was plenty. I probably had um, close to about 60 centimeters of that left, but it's always good to have a little bit more in case you want to do the sleeves, but I've decided um, I'll opt it out for those for now. So I'm going to take you through my sew along. So I'll just be um, sewing through the steps. I'll give you a little bit of a guide of what I'm doing and we can have a bit of a chat. Firstly, um, I like to read through the notes. I've got quite a comprehensive um, bit at the front with a lot of information about how to prepare your fabric. Um, just little hints and tips with uh, sewing things like bar tacks for splits. Um, things that you really probably should uh, read through before you get started. I love buying the paper pattern, especially when you get such a fantastic book like this. Um, I normally do download most of my PDF patterns online now. Um, but this one is, it's a great little booklet and it's something to keep and refer back to. First of all, the fabric has been washed, dried and pressed before I actually cut the pattern pieces out. Um, I'm sewing a size 14 because it's quite a roomy dress that you can actually like tie in with a belt to fit it more. But I wanted it to be quite comfortable for her. Um, yep, and basically the first thing to do is the stay stitching. So I'll show you the, the pieces I've got. I've interfaced my front and back neck basting pieces so they're cut on the fold so I always um, always pin the little pattern piece to each piece so I don't forget which is which because it is easy to mix up okay so I've got my pieces here I've got my interface back and front and neck pieces this is Shinji he loves my sewing which is actually a pool table but <laughs> I use it for sewing and he's a real sticky nose he loves to come and investigate I think he just likes the sound of the paper so say hi Shinji okay Right, so that's a back yoke piece because there's two pieces on the back. The back yoke is the top of the shoulders. That's a separate piece. So you could actually mix and match the fabric if you wanted to do that. This is the um, dress back. So you'll see it's the cut off piece. There's a sleeve, which is a grown on sleeve. Okay, we've got the front pockets. You can use pockets if you like because they just sewn on the front. So it's up to you. The front part of the dress. And I usually like to mark all my little notch pieces um, with chalk so I know where to attach pockets and things like that. And the belt tie. So it's a really quite an easy looking pattern. So first thing I'm going to do to get started is to stay stitch my neckline pieces. So I'll bring you over to the sewing machine. Shinji? Hello? Hi. There's not much hope of getting sewing done when you've got a cat on your shoulder that thinks she's a bird or a parrot. <laughs> First of all, we do our pressing and our edge stitching around our pocket. Do that as an individual um, stitching, and then we're going to stitch it to the garment. So that way you get a really neat finish. Some people even use um, glue, like glue stick for pockets. I personally wouldn't with linen because I'm worried about it coming through. But with denim, I think people do it with, with pockets on jeans. Um, but I'll just use pins for this. It looks fairly straightforward. So we'll go and press those and I'll come back. So I've been impressed my tops of my pockets as per instructions. It says one and a quarter inch press over and fold over twice that width. And if you haven't got one of these little seam gauges, this is a Merchant Mills one. They're fantastic because you can get right down to the minute little measurement on there. Pop your little arrow where you're meant to be and then you can accurately measure and as per this one, it's one and a quarter inch. So you can see that on there and doubled over. And now we're going to sew along the bottom of the pocket uh, fold. So it says to top stitch. So it's, sometimes it's tricky to get the top stitching right on the edge because you can tend to get, um, you know, you can tend to leave a little bit of the fold out and then you'll have a little bit of a gape in there. So it's always good to go along with your finger and also use your measuring tool device to help you with that as well. So I can see on there it's one and a quarter inch where the fold ends. So I'm going just inside of that. Okay. So yeah, I really love sewing with linen lately. It's become my most favorite um, fabric to wear. It's not cheap, but sometimes you can find it on special 
you get a good deal and that's when to stock up. And I'm trying to buy more solid colors than too many prints, although I love prints. Seems like I've got, my wardrobe gets swamped with them. So um, it's good to have some good basic solid colors to get you through the season as well. And then you'll tend to wear them more often through the year. And also um, they'll, they'll never go out of season, out of fashion. So solids can be great. So as you can see, I haven't gone right to the edge, but I'd prefer that than to be having to re-sew the line because you really want that top stitching edge to be nice and neat. That's the most important part of, of the pocket. Okay, so I'll come back. I'm gonna chalk mark my actual front dress and then we're gonna sew the pockets to the front. It's really important, as I said before, to pre-wash linen and cotton especially because they do have, tend to have a high shrinkage percentage um, so don't skimp on that because uh, that's that you don't want the dress to shrink once you've already sewn it up because nothing worse than having a dress that fits you perfectly when you've sewn it up and then you get it after the wash and it's shrunk two sizes so which um, look linens and cottons these days aren't as bad as they used to be they used to shrink a lot more than what they do now especially if they've got a blend like this is a cotton linen blend so this won't shrink as much in the wash you've got to be really accurate with your chalk spots too. On the pattern it's got spots for the dress placement or stars for the top placement. So you want to make sure they line up really well because you've got two pockets on the front. You don't want them to be lopsided once you've got the dress on. It will look a bit silly. So I'm going to go and place these pockets on my spots and I'll come back. Pockets are pinned and ready to go. We're going to start the top and work our way down the three sides. And it's always easier to do pockets before do anything else because they've got a flat piece of fabric to work with so that's why they always get you to do that first so here we go and you want to get as close as you can to the edge of the pocket try and be really accurate with your uh, needle placement and just take your time so you don't want to rush through this step because the pockets very important to line up nice and straight. I always clip the little corner of the bottom edge just so it doesn't poke through once you've sewn it. So. Don't forget to pivot and turn at your corners. That way you get a really nice, accurate square. And make sure your fabric's nice and flat underneath as well. Another good thing about this dress is there's no fastenings, no openings, no zips. So it's a really good dress to sew if you are not confident with that kind of thing. snippers are great it is a little fiskers brand um, I really need to have two pairs it's great to have one by your uh, overlocker as well as your sewing machine because they tend to go walking <laughs> so okay so we're gonna start off um, I'm gonna deviate from the instructions and do the little corner edges on these first as well because that way I like to get my corners nice nicely tacked down so I'm gonna start at the top corner
those people that always just throws all my scraps and threads on the ground. Even though I've got a little bit under there, I tend to get lazy and think I'll just do it at the end because I get too focused on what I'm doing. So there are my pockets. You can see the front of the dress is almost done. But we didn't do the stay stitching around the neckline, so I'm going to do that first before I move on. So stay stitching, you usually work towards the centre. Close to the edge, get to the centre, and then you work from the top down towards the other way. So you don't want to keep going straight around because it, it will lose the shape. So get the other side, and you do the same thing to the down to the centre. So front of the dress is ready to go. And now we're on to the next stage of the dress and that is to get the back yoke and the gathering done. So in the instructions it says to do your pinning your um, top to your bottom yoke and then you gather uh, a small section, pin it so that all the notches line up first and then just stitch it all across. So we'll do our um, gathering section first. So in the back of the dress, um, so the dress, the, the skirt part of the, um, the back we need to gather. You'll see the little notches we put in there. So there are notches. So that's where we want to sew in between that for the gathers. So two rows of gathering in the long stitch on your machine. So I will start that now. <laughs> Our gather. So we are going to pull the long thread on each side and then we will match up the notches on the yoke and then we'll see how much more we need to pull in the gather so right sides together which this fabric's easy because both sides are the same so don't you just love it when you don't have to worry about that it's one less job to worry about okay so, first thing we'll do is pin the edges together. And you can see there's not really a lot of gathering to be done there. We'll match our notches up. So there's our first notch there. It's going to be a very generously sized dress, so there shouldn't be any fitting problems, especially when you can bring it in with a belt. They're the best kind of things to sew because it gets the stress off you then if you don't um, particularly want anything to be form fitted. And if you're making something for a gift like what I am, I think it's a lot easier to choose something that's generous and that you won't have to worry about fitting the person as much. Make sure you go the nice and evenly spaced and we're going to sew this. So pop the stitch length back to the normal length because we're not gathering anymore. We don't want a big stitch, we want it to be nice and firm. The problem with linen sometimes with pins is that because of the loose weave you can lose a lot of your pins. So you have to be really careful with that. I'm going to overlock all my seams at the end. I think it's just easy that way just to show you a run through. What you'll need to do at the end, you'll see you can, with the gathering, you can see the gathering stitch line. You need to unpick that and pull that stitch out now that you've 
glued together. So we've finished off the seam edge with the overlocker and pressed it up and now we're going to top stitch along that seam and also I forgot to stay stitch the back neck so we want to make sure we do both sides of that first. Here I am telling everybody to make sure they stay stitched so do as I say not as I do. <laughs> Top to the center, pull it out. And because of the loose weave nature of women, we've got to make sure that the stay stitching gets done because it does tend to bag out and lose its shape quite easily. So you don't want to, don't want to skip that step. We've pressed the seam allowance up. And we're going to stay stitch, so we're going to, we're going to top stitch along the back of that yoke line as well. So, have the luxury of sewing in the daytime how much better is the lighting for working with when your eyes start to get weak at night i suppose a lot of people don't have the luxury of sewing through the day because if they're at work um they might find nighttime works better for them sometimes the creative juices are flowing better at night when you're more tired for some reason later at night for me but then i tend to make silly mistakes and rush things and and then i get overtired and i can't sleep so it is nice to sew in the daytime. So there's my top stitching back yoke. Okay, so next step is the shoulder seam. So we're gonna put our right sides together, pin back at shoulders and sew your 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then finish off the seam allowance with the overlocker. So let's go to that now. So right sides together, double check. My right side, my pockets. you guys can see I haven't got a really top of the range machine mine's just a basic Janome um, just above the entry level I think it cost me about four to five hundred dollars um, Australian that is and that was about four years ago um, so yeah it's the my Excel um, machine and I just think it's it's made me so many garments my wardrobe it's just I think that the greatest thing with this uh, Janome is the tension. I never have an issue with the tension, which I have had in the past with other machines. And it doesn't have any computerized buttons or anything. It's just got your basic stitches because I tend to just use basic stitches for sewing the wardrobe anyway. So it's never let me down touch wood. So um, I can highly recommend the Janome. And especially if you go and see a service agent um, somewhere privately too, you can always get that after sales care and servicing. Um, but yeah, it's well worth uh, having a test run, even go and have a test run on some Janome's. A lot of quilting shops and sewing, like independent shops, will have machines set up there. You can go in and then and test them out and they're always willing to, to help you with that and even guide you through stitching and um, threading them up and that kind of thing. So the next bit called for the edges to be finished. I'm doing the short sleeves, so I didn't need to worry about adding on the three quarters. So I finished off my side seams with the overlocker. One thing that really annoys me is when you cut all the notches at the start and then you, you finish your edges and you have to redo your notches because you'll lose them in the serger or the overlocker as we call them here. Um, so then you've got to reapply your notches to everything because you, yeah, you tend to just lose them in the serging. So that really annoys me. Oh. But I suppose if I just have um, some little snippers 
nearby and I can snip as soon as I go over them so I don't lose them again. But I do like to be accurate with that because um, the splits are really important to line up. So the next step is to sew my side seams down to the notch and then um, back stitch a bit there and then lengthen my stitch and baste the rest of the way down so that I can press the seams all open and that then gives it that nice line when you want to go ahead and do the splits. So this is the next, next step. So I'm going to pin the notches to make sure they don't move because then you'll have an uneven hem as well. So we don't want that. So just check, I always check when I pin the notch, the hem is the same level there. So I pin where the notch is and then I'll pin again at the sleeve. That way it gives that nice, uh, nice spaced out, even seam. Otherwise you can run into trouble. So yeah, it's, fit it's fitting really nicely. So I'll just pop another pin in the middle there and I will get sewing. So lengthen your basting stitch right to the top and sew along from where you were. No need for doing your back stitch there because that stitching line's all going to come. Next step is to press your side seams open with the iron and then remove your basting threads from your slits and then you need to come back and sew those slits up. Now I'm just going to uh, unpick the basting threads up to the um, start of the split which was the little nicks. You can see the notches that I cut in the fabric so I'll just pull these out and then we're going to do the splits. notches are nearly there. That's why they get you to do that long basting thread. And there they are there. So ready to start. So we're going to start at the bottom of the hem and we're going to make sure the top stitch is just under three. So we're going to start our top stitching now. We're going to work our way up 
to the pivot point of the split. just above that point and we're going to pivot the machine the uh, the dress around straighten up that piece sew across and then we're going to pivot again and come down the split that way you get a really nice even top stitched split and then we can come back and do the bar tack at the end just to keep to protect that split so it won't go any further bar tack just protects the top of the split so it's just a matter of um, top stitching and, and reverse stitching over that Bar tack. And then we'll repeat that on the other side. You can see the inside's all been seam finished and you'll have your split laying nice and flat. So now we're just doing the top stitching around the sleeve. We do a three eighths of an inch um, folded in twice and then we are stitching around I'm actually doing it on the inside because it's a bit too fiddly to top stitch that kind of skinny hem on the right side. So I'll get a final press once it's all done as well. And with the hem, I have gone around and pressed um, one and a quarter inch and then doubled it again, so twice. And that's going to be our hem and we're going to top stitch that right across. So with the neck facing, it's done as any other normal facing would be. And that's the, you join the top shoulder seams together, press the seams flat. And then it uh, looks like we're going to press in the edges, um, finish off the edges there, about a quarter of an inch to the wrong side. And then stitching uh, around. And then the right sides together, pin the neck face into the neckline, matching shoulder seams. So that's, yeah, you need to use your pins for that. Make sure it's all lined up properly with the shoulder seams. And that is the last step. So we're nearly there. So we're going to sew our shoulder seams together. Always make sure you match up the neck edging properly. Sometimes the interfacing can stick out a little bit. So you want to make sure you get the fabric in there as well. Rather than uh, pressing these seams flat and then coming back stitching and going back again, I'm just going to uh, make sure they're nice and flat when I sew them. So I'm going to sew the stitching now and then press next. So I'm back again, now we're going to stitch the neck facing to the neckline, right sides together, make sure you've got your front piece to your front piece, and I'm going to line my shoulder seams up. I've just made the ties and I'm doing my, my pet peeve is turning ties inside out. I've got a chopstick, I've got um, a loop turner, but I always find the easiest way is just by sticking my finger in and pulling it out the old fashioned way. Um, so I'm going to pop some pictures up when I finish pressing everything and let you guys see how it turned out. The only thing I would suggest is watch for your facings, watch your stitching and, and yeah, top stitch it the right way around. Um, you can tend to get a bit of puckering when you've got like a cotton or a linen um, and the way the weave is when you put the interfacing on can affect the structure of it and the, the smoothness you'll get out of it. So next time I will probably not bother with an interfacing. I don't think it really needs it. 
and you could even look at maybe doing a bias binding. So we'll see how the end results look and I will um, pop some videos up. So I hope you've enjoyed that today. Um, I'm just trying to think of some more like basic sew alongs I can get you guys interested in doing. If there's anything you can suggest that you would like me to sew and you can watch along, let me know in the comments below. It's Mabel, she's always trying to hog the limelight here. This is my old cat. She's 18 years old and she's a little gray torty Burmese cat. So she likes, likes the sewing too. So see you next time guys. Bye.